Well, hi, and welcome to this week's episode of My Coaching Story. David Olchowski joins me from Northern Connecticut. He's just south of Massachusetts. Uh, welcome, David. Thank you, Brad. Great to be here today. Hey, great to have you there. Now, I drove up that way a few years back when we were allowed to travel and all those fun things. Beautiful part of the country. Um, now, you get to be there and coach there, but I want to start with one of the more interesting questions about business coaches. Why is it coaching? What is it you enjoy about coaching? Well, I really love uh, seeing other people succeed. So what, what's been important throughout my career was surrounding myself with, with good people, turning them into great teams, uh, and then helping those people grow and develop and advance in their careers. So that's just kind of what fills me up emotionally and where I've got my greatest memories in my career is just helping other people grow and succeed. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, fulfilling that can be if you're the right type of person. Other people are like, I don't want to care about others. I just want my own success. So let's do a look into that background then. What brought you to coaching? What was your careers prior to coaching? So uh, I'm an engineer by degree. Um, so I started my career in, in aerospace manufacturing. So with, with some of the, the best names in the, in the industry, like Pratt & Whitney Jet Engines and and United Technologies. And I worked my way up uh, through engineering and operations, eventually running businesses uh, in executive roles uh, for those companies and some other large tier one companies, uh, primarily here in, in Connecticut. Uh, and that was a great career. I had a lot of fun doing it, did a lot of things with what people call lean manufacturing and lean enterprise. Uh, and that was, that was great in my career. And that was kind of my mission at that point in time was to help Connecticut manufacturing survive and thrive by making them more profitable, more efficient um, through those lean techniques. And, and that was a great run. Um, but ultimately, I got to the point where uh, the corporate scorecard didn't seem to mean as much uh, to me anymore. And so uh, I had the opportunity uh, in last year, in 2020, uh, to explore other opportunities. So there was some restructuring going on at the company that I was with. Um, the roles that were there didn't really interest me. And I said, thanks, but no thanks. Um, I'll take the separation package. And yeah. so I had I had thought about uh, business ownership throughout my career. I thought eventually that was in, in the cards somewhere. And I got a tickler on LinkedIn from Action Coach just about the time I was leaving. And I didn't delete it this time. So usually <laughs> delete those things. I didn't delete it. And so I kept it, although I, I look traditional job route because I have one kid left to get through college out of three. And I thought maybe before I start playing with house money, I'll get that last kid through college. Yeah. Pandemic hits, um, aerospace economy just drops off a cliff. And so the pendulum started to swing and I started to explore business ownership. And I was really looking at a lot of things in franchise space, um, everything from construction to entertainment to um, mobile trash compaction and business coaching was one of those. Um, and Brad, it was actually, I had a conversation with you. You and I had a one-on-one. -on -one. I was trying to make my decision between action coach and another franchise. Um, and when I got off the, the call with you, I, I went to my wife and I said, I'm doing business coaching. And she's like, of course you are. Cause that's who you are. And it's so amazing it how was, they can see that though. And they can see that this is what you've trained for your whole life, basically. But it's like, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's right. And it was no surprise to my kids because I, I as my kids grew up, I coached their sports teams. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I love developing kids and seeing them grow and develop in their confidence. And so my kids were like, of course, that. That's, of course, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. So. Um, that's ultimately how I reached that decision, uh, yeah. probably end of uh, end of July last year. You know, it's amazing when you look at that and now seeing the results with clients at the other side of that, how there is this just a natural progression for people that are natural born coaches to lead to that. So that then brings me to the next question then. Um, in coaching the clients you're working with right now, is, is it falling back on your lean stuff? Is, it, uh, is there a particular area that you're loving more than any other area? That's, that is actually a great question. And, uh, and I thought going in, if you asked me a year ago, like, where would I gravitate to? I thought I would gravitate to manufacturing companies and mm. focus more on that kind of lean activity. 
But as I've learned the whole action coach system and all of the ways that we help businesses grow, um, I've really become attracted to those other pieces around what won't work typically in my wheelhouse before, kind of the sales and marketing piece and how to focus on those elements to help a business grow. And yeah. so I even have a client who needs to do some kind of lean in the office, but like, I don't want to dive into the details of that. Um, so I've connected him with somebody else who I know in, in a network who's going to work with him on that little project, um, because I really like looking, working on all of those other aspects, the systemization, the sales and marketing, the niche, and, and even you know a lot of businesses, even that have been around a long time, that still have things at the mastery level to work on. So I yeah. really like working um, up and down the range of the six steps and not really focusing in just on that kind of lean piece. You know, it's really interesting how when the clients show up and, and it's like, if you look at the industries you're coaching right now, it's like, hang on, this is not an industry I had anything to do with ever before. But coaching isn't really about industries. It's about the methodologies of growing a business owner and of growing a business. In, in diving in the deep end for you and looking at that, I, I imagine there's a lot of your own personal learnings in the last 12 months, as well as obviously a massive career in business that are saying, you know, this allows me to be a better coach. Absolutely. So, um, you know, the things I took from my corporate career, uh, that team building aspect, the systemization mm -hmm. aspect, a lot of those things are have become second nature to me. So I recognize those opportunities when working with clients. Um, where I, where I need to be more conscious is just really on kind of the sales and marketing piece. Mm. And I definitely had some head trash around sales coming into this because, you know, an engineer background, that's not what I was doing. Re re the um, old recovering engineer joke is alive and well. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely alive and well. And so I had head trash around sales because I knew I was going to have to sell. I was going to have to sell my services, but really, what I've always been as an engineer, it's a, it's a problem solver. Mm. So again, it's professionally helping people solve problems, right? Yeah. And so uh, what I found out is that I'm actually pretty good at it and I'm getting better. And so that's kind of been one of the big surprises, I think, for me uh, in this past 12 months is that mm. how I've kind of changed my headset and my mindset around that. And that I really, I really had some natural skills and muscle there on rapport building uh -huh. um, that have enabled me to really come up the learning curve, uh, perhaps faster than I thought I would a year ago. Yeah, you know, I, I always look at it, and I think that it's a, it's an interesting challenge for all of us to understand that no one actually ever is sold coaching. You don't sell coaching; you coach yep. people to a decision. And the decision is, yes, it's right for me, or no, it's not right for me, or yes, it's right for me, but I need it at a very low level or a high level. And speaking of that, the programs you're running with your clients right now, it's not just the one-to-one -one coaching. You're, you're looking at a varied spectrum. Tell me a bit more about that and why you do that. So, so what really attracted me to the firm franchise was the ability to work with all types of businesses and to have mm -hmm. some scale, all mm -hmm. right? Because- as a practice, being able to touch maybe 20, 30 businesses, to me, I wanted to, to do more than that in this uh -huh. Connecticut economy. I wanted to work across an economic geography. The, the firm allows me to have that kind of scale and it allows me to also uh, offer fully, really the full product and service ladder that Action uh -huh. Coach offers. And therefore, I can help any type of business that wants help. Yeah. And so we do have... Uh, virtually everything running. So my first programs out of the gate were was Action Club. Um, and then we moved into some one-to-one -one clients. Uh, we've now also started Profit Club. And as people graduated from Action Club, they've moved into Mentor Club. So everything from one-to-one, -one, Mentor Club, Action Club, Growth Club, of course, was also the, what we launched uh, last December. And actually, we were having our fourth Growth Club uh, next Wednesday to plan for the fourth quarter. So Brilliant. we really do have everything up and running right now. Yeah. So for the average business owner out there understanding, you have programs that run from the tiniest of businesses right through to the large companies that uh, go into that level of one-to-one -one coaching, which is a phenomenal way to help. So uh, in thinking about uh, where your business is going and looking at all that sort of stuff, one of the things that you've done very well, your clients have said, is you've built sort of like a community of business owners. 
Share with me why that's important for them and why it's important for you. So it, it is because there's, again, we know the stats. So uh, again, forgive me if I misquote, but you know, 27% of business owners think they need some help with the business. Only 7% really think uh, they are willing to do something about it and learn more about it. And then only 3% are willing to spend money on doing something about it. So there's a lot of business owners um, who are out there and need help and they feel like they're alone. And when they get into a community, um, a lot of them approach it somewhat with intimidation, thinking, well, I'm the only one that is a mess here. <laughs> like, I I'm the only one that doesn't have my stuff together. Um, and it's really no, like every business owner has stuff to work on. All right. Even the top CEOs of the biggest corporations have coaches. All right. So everybody has stuff to work on. It's just the, the action coach community are the ones that have chosen to do something about it. Yeah. All right. And so that's who we get. So we actually heard that from probably our biggest client in terms of revenue. Uh, we're hosting our growth club next week at his restaurant. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he said on Profit Club, because we got I've got my one-on-one -on -one clients on Profit Club. He's like, it's so great to be part of a community with other like-minded people who are looking to grow their businesses. And on that call, I've got small sole proprietors who are just there for just Profit Club. Mm -hmm. But they're talking and getting advice from one-on-one -on -one clients in that Profit Club. And to me, that's the power of that that uh, yeah that action coach community uh, yeah. really in in full manifestation. And I think during COVID, a lot of your clients appreciated it even more because you know they were virtual and to to be in connection with other business owners during that time was massive. Just just for the psychological aspect, because as you said, it is a lonely job out there when you're a business owner, especially one who wants to grow and doesn't want to just putter along type thing. Exactly. And that was, it is a lonely place. And a lot of people did feel alone, especially in, in the pandemic. Um, and, and still, even though you're connecting with people virtually, um, it's still only through the, uh, the computer screen. And um, so as soon as we could, um, we did get back to doing mm -hmm. hybrid things. So even our first growth club back last December, um, we did in person and, and virtually. So we did a, we did a hybrid. Right. Um, and now we're to the point where uh, in Connecticut, we've got a good vaccination rate. And so we are just this time we are going uh, full in person uh, next week. And we've got our biggest growth club yet. Yeah. You know, when when you look at the results you're getting with clients and the results you're getting in your business, because you've got to do everything you're teaching them as a business owner. It's like it's a mirroring effect, I guess, when you sit down and say, okay, here I am growing my business, building my team, employing people, doing the things that I teach you. And I think that's one of the reasons why you're getting such great results with clients. Absolutely. And so uh, I, I rely on my own examples to illustrate to clients how these things are working. So when I talk about 10 by 10 marketing strategies, Yes, you're a small sole prop, so we're not going to start with 10. We'll start with three. But like, let's talk about what some of these marketing strategies look like. And I say, here's all of the marketing strategies that we've employed with my business development manager, Dan Callahan, who I'm very fortunate to have brought on with me a year ago. Um, and so we've got all these marketing strategies. I've talked about how we've tested and measured. I've offered some funny stories about, <laughs> you know, like, like how he's been shouted out of businesses because uh, we did we we uh, we used the the ad critiques yeah. um, and so he went in with a bold call follow up on an ad critique and they didn't like the letter that he'd <laughs> sent they thought it was too nasty so they shouted him out of the store um, so I'm sharing this story with my clients so it's it's real world example here's me testing and measuring some of these same marketing strategies I'm talking to you about yeah now good news with Dan was. You know, he went to a florist that were also grooming, bought some flowers and he brought it into those ladies. And then they they love the flowers and they apologize for being so so nasty. To <laughs> you know, one of the great things about being a business owner and an entrepreneur is that we do relate to each other real well. So that being said, community of your clients, but you're also part of that bigger community of all of the business coaches around the world. What's that? How does that help your clients and how does that help you? 
Oh, I've got so many examples I, I bring to bear when talking with clients or prospects about the vast network that we're part of. So like that's that's one of my opening slides uh, when I'm introducing myself is this is who is with us. So mm -hmm. this isn't just like two guys coaching firm. All right. We are with Action Coach. All right. And mm -hmm. this is who's behind us, this vast network that is really supportive. We're on coaching calls every week. We're on quarterly, comp, you know, coaching mm -hmm. conferences, annual conferences. So we're always getting some of the best learning coming from the best coaches in the world. And when I've got questions about how to coach a client, maybe it's something that I, a question I may be stumped on. I don't have an answer to or I just want some other answers. I've got coaches that I can email and they get back to me right away. Hey, here's what we've tried. I've got a you know similar client, similar space. Here's what we've tried. Here's what's had success. And so it's that type of network that I, my clients see that I'm tapped into and that they can ultimately tap into as we have the need. And that's yeah. hugely, hugely powerful. Yeah, it's a great, I, I do love the fact though that every one of our team has the same nature as you and I of wanting to help, wanting to see success, wanting results. So you know, when anyone ever reaches out to us, like, yeah, I can help. Why? Because that's who you are. It's it's your nature type thing. So um, future for you, where do you see the future of your firm and, and that Connecticut market? Uh, what do you see happening for you as you grow the business? So, you know, the the there was an idea, I think, that we were going to maybe get past this pandemic. And just some of the reading I've been doing is I don't think we're ever really going to get past it. We're just going to find a different way of living mm -hmm. with it, you know, for however long, right? It yeah. could be just an annual vaccine. So now it's getting businesses to think about, all right, we're not just trying to get over like a short-term thing. It's like the world has changed. Let's recognize the new normal and let's start to move forward with mm -hmm. how, however that's going to be. So a lot of businesses, that means it's a mix of like face-to-face -face in person, but also some virtual. So we've got to find a way, like don't just get by with the virtual that you, you're doing, like make it excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. And so so that's some of the things that we're doing and we're, where we're focused with our clients. Um, and I, I do just see in terms of my market, it has opened up over the last year. You know, we've gained momentum over the last 12 months that's continuing to build. We're developing deeper relationships, more strategic alliances uh, where we're going to be able to get access to other people's clients and we could be uh -huh. referring people back and forth. So. I see I'm really bullish for where my firm is that we're going to continue to grow and expand. And for me, um, as of right now, uh, there's no one north of me. So the New England is is, uh, is where I'm headed. <laughs> you know, David, we love seeing the results you're getting with clients. We love the way you're building your firm. And we love seeing that, uh, you know, as you keep adding coaches to your team, you keep having more and more people being able to be helped. So Congrats on all of that. Congrats on the growth so far. Look forward to seeing of much more growth in the near future. Thank you, Brad. It's uh, it's great to be part of this Action Coach community. Um, absolutely zero regrets on the, the decision I made a year ago. And it is actually a year ago today I started my training online, September 9th of, of 2020. Um, and, you know, no no looking in the rearview mirror. It's, uh, it's all blue skies ahead. Fantastic. Thanks, buddy. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time on my coaching story.